I met um, uh, Rick, our guitar player, in, uh, in jail. In jail? Yeah. We were at this big, uh, there's a college town in Ohio called Athens, and um, uh, they have a Halloween party every year, yeah. and uh, everybody does acid and freaks out, and uh, I got arrested for uh, peeing on the side of a car, right. and uh, Rick, I guess, got arrested for uh, stealing some dogs or something, and uh, we met in jail and found out we were from the same town, and we agreed to, uh, we we decided we'd get together and play together when we got back home. I can't really say where I met John because he was involved in illegal activity when I met him. Uh, I used to purchase objects from him. Right. And, uh, Inspiration. Yeah, exactly. Right. And uh, he uh, he ended up joining up later, and we found uh, we found Steve in a, in a bar. Yeah. He said he knew how to play drums, so. The reason why we play so loud and crunchy is because, I mean, I'm not really that great of a guitar player, so the louder I play, uh, the, the better it feels. Yeah, the better it feels and the less mistakes you can pick up. I don't know what we're gonna do, you know? I mean, we have, uh, you know, Sub Pop, are, they're our friends, and, uh, you know, when you start talking about it, that's something that I haven't been able to sit down and sort through yet. So I'm not opposed to, uh, doing something with a bigger company. You know, if it means that more people get to hear your band, because, you know, let's face it, if you get in a band, you know, do you want to play for 30 people or do you want to play for 3,000 people, you know? I mean, some people want to play for 30 people. I'm not one of those people. Ah, the Afghan Wakes. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, they are totally one of the greatest bands on the planet. Very big fans of soul music. They spend a lot of time on their videos, as a matter of fact. I mean, Greg Dooley, who is the singer from the band, basically uh, has spent, I would say he spends as much time conceptualizing, you know, video-wise, as he does, like, writing the music. Yeah, I think in the next few years, um, out of all the new bands that are coming out of the States, you're going to see some of the more brilliant videos. When we first signed to Sub Pop, we were, you know, there were, you know, very few groups on the label, and none of them were very well known. I mean, I think the best known group at that point was Mud Honey, and that was on the strength of one single. I hadn't even heard their album yet. So when Sub Pop called us up, we didn't know who the hell they were. This was 1989. Yeah, we have money now. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, you, that's about as honestly as I can put that. I mean, it's, it's actually, uh, I mean, luckily we were able to make money on the road the last uh, year and a half we were on Sub Pop, so we were able to support ourselves as musicians. But, uh, uh, the most, uh, the thing that it did for us most was uh, allowed us to make the kind of record that we had been wanting to make for a long time, and we're, uh, you know, constrained by, you know, being on Sub Pop, who, who were great to us. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm proud to be a, uh, to have been associated with them, but, uh, um, you know, they were they had limited resources, and uh, and I think our uh, grand ideas were bigger than their resources, so uh, we we sort of needed to to stretch to be able to do what we're doing now. Probably a year after I, I first met you all, um, uh, I, I did leave the group for like a month before we, it was just before we, we did congregation, I was sort of like not, I, I just had gotten tired of the acrimony, you know, and it just wasn't fun. I, I, it didn't seem fun for anybody. And um, uh, what I think we did with, by getting back together and doing congregation and during the EP, uh, we, you know, we kind of grew up a little bit, because a lot of those fights were just kind of childish, egotistical, you know, you know, ego clashes that just were stupid. I mean, we, you know, I think we realized that, you know, the four of us together are a lot better off than the four of us apart, so, uh, and, and plus, you know, I mean, we really do like each other in this real strange, dysfunctional way, anyway, so. 
I sang mostly from the first person, so it was a lot of I and me. And uh, I think folks tended to uh, 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 think that this was, you know, me, uh, you know, bleeding autobiographically onto a record. Uh, number one, I mean, I, I've never written a 100% autobiographical record. Anybody who does, I, you know, I don't think anybody's that, in, nobody's life is that interesting to fill up 45 minutes of just going on about how miserable life is, you know. Uh, I was using more observations and, you know, you know, inspirations from books and movies and, and as well as part of me, you know. I mean, it was, uh, you know, anything I could grab to, to sort of create this mood that we were trying to create with the album, I mean, because it, it was the first time instead of just putting 10 or 12 songs on a record, we were trying to, you know, record a piece of music that had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Should have seen this shit coming down the hall Every night I spent in that bed With you facing the wall If I could have Sometimes, uh, you know, I listen to, you know, a lot of contemporary music and it's just really angry and angst-ridden, but without any kind of direction. I mean, who is your anger directed at? Who are you pissed off at, you know? I mean, I, you know, I want it crystallized a little bit more for me, you know? Are you, you know, what exactly are you going on about, you know? Tell you a secret that's why I loved her, she loved me We slept together a couple of times Think I'm proud of this, well maybe But the shame you never lose Infatuated with a lunatic What we try to do is, you know, take the spirit of what we're influenced by rather than just rip off the sound, you know, I mean, if we, uh, if we came walking out on stage with a horn section and matching suits and, you know, and we were doing like temptation style dance moves, that would be something a little different. Or if we were doing something like, you know, the brand new heavies or young disciples or something like that, it would be, you know, Yes, you are a soul band, but, you know, I mean, it's just more of an influence to us than, than anything else. And, I mean, we do reinterpret covers of old soul and R&B songs, and, uh, but they're definitely reinterpretations. I mean, they're, they're nothing like they were originally. I view us differently every time we put out a record, you know. I mean, the, the one thing that I can say is, like, the three records that we've done are all completely different from each other, and uh, I'm kind of proud of that fact that we've been able to stretch each time, you know. I mean, I hope, I hope that the next record is, is, you know, even different than this one, so. I mean, I, I'm actually sure it will be, because I have half of it in my head right now. Hear me now, don't forget I'm not the man my actions would suggest Little boy, I'm tied to you We're a rock band with, an, you know, with R&B leanings, you know, but we also lean toward distortion and things like that, so we're sort of screwing around with something kind of different, you know. It's still fun to me, you know. It's, uh, 
if, if it stopped being fun, I would, I would quit doing it, you know, mm -hmm. and go find something that was, you know, more fun, probably. Mm -hmm.